to start it because you're okay. in a practice session. But, but he's got the broadcast on his end, so he'll hit the broadcast and that should be good, right? Okay, as long as one of y'all does, yeah. Okay. Coach, I hit record on my end. Okay. So we should be good. Go ahead and hit that broadcast. Let's see what it does. <laughs> Webinar is now broadcasting to all viewers. Okay. Okay, I'm going to hit participants and let's see if it starts adding people. Yeah, I see viewers now. There's two viewers so far. And then uh, I would, your video is still shut. I don't know if you care about that or not, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me go ahead and hit that. I'm going to go ahead and kill that. Okay. There we go. I'm good now, right? Yep. All right, we got about 10 viewers. Uh, yeah, just tell them to hit me up afterwards tonight or whatever. DM me. DM me tonight or whatever. You guys just now logging in. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. We're just uh, finishing a few things up here. We're going to shoot for 9.05, so that's two minutes. Got a good crowd on here, about 13 so far, Coach. Okay. And uh, – I got a few people here and there that are DMing me, DMing me, so I'll take care of that kind of while you're getting going. All right. All right. <coughs> All right, babe, I think I'm good. Okay. All right, you ready, Coach? Yep, whenever. All right, we'll go ahead and get this thing going. All right, guys, I want to welcome you to uh, the webinar tonight. Uh, Coach Peyton Haynes with Luther College is going to go over his zone dive and quarterback follow. I really appreciate you, Coach, uh, taking the time to uh, put a presentation together and, and uh, we'll kind of let you take it away. And if you need anything, brother, just let me know. Give me a holler. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, guys, like, like Coach Rodriguez said, um, I'm going to look over zone dive and quarterback follow. Um, as you guys have questions throughout this, just make sure you – there's a little Q&A button you can click, type in your questions. We'll make sure to get those answered um, as the presentation goes or – kind of at the end, we can kind of flip back through the presentation and look at a few things that question wise. So make sure as things progress here, make sure you ask as much as you can. Um, obviously it's great things that three face football has been doing for getting everybody connected and providing stuff like this to kind of be able just to share with each other some different things we can do with our offense. And obviously with what we're going to look at today, um, it's, it's what we do. Um, there's obviously a ton of different ways to do these different things. So just a few different likes of what things that, we like to accomplish with this play um, and just we'll kind of go through some different things here as we look. So we'll start out going through some zone dive stuff and then translate that into QB follow. So um, for us, you have to pretty much have zone dive um, to run QB follow because how much they complement each other and kind of some base rules that we use with it. Um, zone dive for us is going to be an inside veer look initially. Um, out of our quarterback, fullback, and backfield. So we did a webinar here about a month ago that talked about our footwork for inside veer. Um, so that's going to be the same as you will kind of watch some film here. Um, but with zone dives, the same thing here. So the first thing with zone dive is, is keep it super simple. And we'll talk about a few things with that. Um, find out what the defense is taking away. Um, and that kind of goes along with this next thing, saying great communication is key. Um, with this play, um, for us at least, you'd be surprised that two people – that we're going to help determine who's going to be great on this play that you have to be very, very good about is the coach that's watching the defense and your slot back. Um, and those two guys you probably think have nothing to do with this play. If you really think about it with zone dive or QB follow. Um, but those two guys for us will dictate if this play is good or bad for us. And I'll kind of get into that here in a second um, with why your slot back, your play side slot back and whoever's watching the defense, watching flow of linebackers, those two things are the most critical two people um, in this play for us. Um, understand the difference between even and odd fronts. The play changes just a little bit for us um, when we run an even front to an odd front, and we'll kind of go over that as well. Um, and then learn to be satisfied with four yards. Um, really good short yards play for us. Both these plays are. And with that, you're never going wrong if you're getting four. Possess the clock. Um, keep your defense off the field and kind of just drive down. Obviously, we know with, with our offense, possessing the ball is, is a very big key in what you want to get done. Okay, so first play we're going to look at here is, like I said, is zone dive. Um, we'll start out looking at all even fronts and then go looking at odd fronts. So we'll kind of let the, the wide run here a couple times um, and then mainly focus on the tight 
of all angles. So I'll let this clip here go a couple of times. Um, like I said, as you have questions about anything, guys, just make sure you don't hesitate to ask. Okay, so any sort of even front for us, our initial first rule is to find the open gap. And I know it sounds super basic and super simple, but find the open gap. So here for us, the example is, we're gonna run this play versus an even front to the B gap, this open gap that's right here. Okay, so that's where our aiming point is. We're gonna man block everything up front, kick here, what we call a short scoop, and what we call a long scoop, and our center's gonna try getting the Mike linebacker. And why I said previously what the most important two people are in your defense is all we're going to do out of our slot is we're going to read this defender right here. Okay, so if this defender out of inside beer look is going like this, we do not want to insert this back here because all he's going to do is eye him and go follow him and clog up the hole. So as you watch this play here, um, this is kind of a little bit about mid-game, um, 21 here goes out like we're running inside veer and you can see what happens here with the play side linebacker. So he steps out and you can see right now our center's gonna try to work to get to the mic. Center gets to the mic, guy folds back in, but by this point he's tackling us with our momentum going forward and we're already at two to three yards. Drive your feet, there's an easy about six to seven yard gain. So again here, open gap, the guy's eyeing up our slot, he stay, takes two steps out, as you can see right there. There's your alley. And with your center going to get the Mike linebacker here, you really want him to try to hit this cut back inside. Okay, so as I said, this is just a 4-3 defense. You can kind of see here again from the wide. So 4-3 defense, we want to read that same or will backer. Okay, 4-3 defense here again. Um, this is with a tight end. Here again, this is first down. Um, right at eight to nine yards on first down. Obviously a great way to, to kind of set up yourself on obviously getting a first down or getting yourself in second and short. Offense obviously opens up a lot at second and short. Okay, for us, you can see here adding a tight end, not every team will do this, but took this linebacker that's normally in this hole here, put him down on the line of scrimmage. So here initially we'll see some different clips of this team here in a little bit. Again, open gap is B gap. That's where we want to look. He, our fullback wants to go there. Our slot now knows that he's going to be taken out so that now he can insert for first color or possibly that high safety. Fullback does not do a good job here, and you'll see the difference as we, when we roll the play here. So pullback, fullback needs to think B-gap run through. There's the kick. You can see fullback now goes C-gap, which now this backer scrapes over the top like he's probably going to most of the time, this Mike linebacker, and makes the play for – our fullback makes a good play, but he should have made the play for a two- to three-yard gain. If our fullback now would have stayed in the B-gap, followed 36 here, you can see the running lane that he would have created now by getting this guy sealed out and kind of the look that he would have had. So fullback is wrong on this. We want him to follow through the open gap principle. If the open gap is open, which it is here, he needs to take the open gap. Okay, here again. 4-3 um, team, you can see the three, the, the overbacker look. Okay, here now, okay, this backer we, was inserting. This was a little bit earlier in the game or later on in the game, kind of after we ran this play a few times. So he's inserting inside. So our, our slot now needs to account for that to take that guy out of the play. So here you can see the different. You can see previously this guy was lined right here, which makes him more of a pitch player, QB player. Now just pre-snap, predetermined, he's inside. So our slot sees that. He knows he needs to take this angle. Again, open gap is B gap. We should have an inside beer look is what we want this play to look like. So you can see here comes the insert of our slot. Now our fullback here pretty much has a two-way go off of this, whichever way he feels like he can get through easier, and then we want him to get vertical off of it. Um, if he would have took the other way, it would have been a much bigger play. We don't really overcoach that. We let that guy to kind of make that decision on what cut he wants to have. Again, you can see we're right at the 25-yard line here on this play. We end up just about the 29, so four yards for us. Here again, kind of look at this angle. So open gap, allow your slot to predetermine almost where he feels like this guy is. Early in the game, if you're worried about this guy fitting hard, make this happen. 
obviously if you're running inside veer and this guy's doing this and you see this guy run hard with him then obviously you know that that play can be set up in that way okay now here's some four four looks so uh, two backers in the box looks instead of three pretty much anytime we have a two backer set um two linebackers set in the box our slot's always pretty much going to insert every time on this. So here again, we're running the play um, to the left side of the screen here. So here's your open gap. Here's your B gap, open gap. So that's where our thought is. Two backers in the box, so now our slot's automatically going to insert to here. We'll short scoop this or long, hopefully try to long scoop this into three technique. Center's now going to look for this backside linebacker flow. See here, good kick out by our tackle. Good insert here by our slot. Good block there on the play side linebacker. Um, you'll notice too, we, we never, and everybody says, well, you can cut in college. We tell our slots never to cut on this play because he's pretty much just going to be creating a pile on the ground. So this is no difference than what you would do um, as, a, as, a, as an insert block out of a high school because obviously I know some of you guys, unless you're down in Texas, you can't cut either. Um, so then we'll kind of look at that here and let this one roll here again for you. Um, just kind of had a question talking about is there is there a cutback option to this? Um, we'll look at one here in a second. Um, initially, we always tell just versus a basic four down front that we want to hit the open bubble. Um, we do run a play where there, there's a cutback option, um, but we'll look at that here kind of in a second more versus an odd front about where we kind of want to make our cutback, and you'll also see one here in a second um, versus a four down. But initially for us, we always want to hit that play side bubble on most of the stuff we're doing to kind of keep the flow. So here again, four down front team. Um, Nick, two backers in the box, a four, four look. Open gap here against B gap. So here's a look. Um, again, here's a good block here by our slot. Fullback hug it. You'll get vertical off of that. You can see a good job here now. Um, we talk about our center's angle. Your center needs to take an angle off of this guy's hip to try to cut off this linebacker. Very, very important aspect of this. Lock on, just run his feet. Good cut here by our fullback, cutting back underneath both of these blocks. Okay, another um, two backer in the box look here. Okay, here's a good example now of how we have a, a head up two technique. So all we're going to tell here now now our fullback technically almost has two open gaps. He has a B gap cut here, and here's kind of that zone cutback that a coach just asked about that we can also possibly have. So if he sees this, for our fullback sees that there's two open gaps, he now is going to read the butt of this guard. This, this guy has to think one of two ways. So if he comes here, our guard is just going to let that guy go that way and kick him out, and we'll take this vertical cut here. If this guy wants to be an A gap defender now and fit here, we're going to down this guy. And then now we'll hit this B gap cut. So here's kind of your zone, your zone cutback element of it. If we have a two technique, um, let the guard, you can see here, this guy played A gap. Our guard kind of helped me make that decision here a little bit. The down block, there's the insert there now by 21. Fullback takes a terrible cut here, trying to go to the outside. Okay, he needs just to get straight up down through that B gap, follow his block. Um, and you could have seen the difference here. He's running outside whenever he had this alleyway here to try to get through. So really coach your fullback, the two technique can make it a little bit more different, difficult, um, but he just really needs to read the butt of that guard. Pretty easy read there out of the butt and get vertical right off that block right there out of, out of your slot on your insert versus two backers in the box. Okay, here again now, same team. Same look, big play here for a touchdown. Um, another thing you'll notice here that's very, very important that can go definitely unnoticed is your slot going in motion. Have him go in motion a little bit earlier than normal, and he all he needs to do is try to hold this backer from folding into the play, and hopefully, if it's not goal line, you want this safety running over the top thinking it's inside V or some sort of outside run play.
appearance here out of a, a freshman quarterback we had from uh, East Bay High School where um, Coach Rodriguez works at down here. Um, so you can see here again, two technique. We're going to read the butt of the guard. Insert here by 24, our play side slot. Good block there. You can see here 16 is the free safety. With the action of the play, he runs over the top of the play. Allows for a nice little cutback here off the block. Um, again, you really need to coach your centers up on trying to cut off this backside linebacker as much as you can. Um, here we're having some issues with the A-gap run through. Um, so we, we decided to double combo the, the play side um, two technique here. If you don't have to do that, the best thing you'd be able to do is send now this, this center right to the backside linebacker. Um, so you can see here he about, he about folds into the play, um, but doesn't. Um, he, our back makes a good play and kind of gets that extra couple yards for an easy touchdown. Okay, some more film here. These would be some good looks from a couple years ago um, from our team about a couple different things that – goods and bads on some things. So here again, this is a 4-4 a four, a four, four look. You can kind of see them trying to get lined up there late. Again, you don't really want to think your fullback, go get four yards, go get four yards. If you pop one, you pop one. But the four-yard mentality needs to be very, very crucial. Okay, here again, open gaps, B gap. Two backers in the box, so our slot's automatically going to insert to go block this play side backer. Good cut here by our fullback. Working back out to the outside off that block. Um, made one guy miss. Ended up turning a six to seven yard gain. Okay, here's some looks that we get, we get what we call a solid front, um, where it's a, a three, a five, and a nine. Um, good look here about how this cut can be very, very crucial to kind of really crease some guys for quick four to five yards before they probably even really know what hit them. It makes the block for your center super easy as well. So now you can see here three, five, nine. So now our open gap's the A gap. Um, out of this, you can you can try to insert through. It's not going to do much for you. Um, but if you if you can get through there, great. If you can't, you can kind of see what we what we do here. We send this guy out. What this team was doing, if you want to look at it here, this was actually their strong safety. They were walking him down almost in a linebacker position to kind of replace the linebacker they brought down on our tight end. So we, we went with the outsert look, bringing this guy out to try to pull him. Um, there'll be a couple good clips of this here, but he needs to be a gap cut now out of our fullback. Really, really good job here by our center. We'd probably actually like to see him stay high, um, lock on 44 and let our fullback make a cut off of him. Same game here again. Be a good angle here from the tight. Um, this is a bad job here by our backside guard, but you'll see that good look fat from here in a second. He's just nose diving instead of true scooping. So you see here again, three, five, nine look, open gaps, a gap. Really, really good job here by our fullback seeing it. Your quarterback cannot cut this thing off either. Don't cut off your fullback. He knows where the ball's going. Good job here just getting through. Like I said, we'd like to see our backside guard here really run his feet better. And even if he wanted to, you could backside double this, um, work your center and guard both on that guy and let a guy come off if you had trouble with that guy. Um, but good luck here getting to the A-gap run. Last one here. Um, last one of this look. Again, now same team now. They moved a guy into the A-gap, so now our B-gaps are what we want to hit. So now our slot sees it's a B-gap run through. Now two linebackers in the box. Really, really good cut here by our fullback. Like I said, guys, this, this play can be super complicated or super easy, but if you're making it complicated, it's because you're probably making it complicated on your kids. Um, this is an easy concept, an easy way to get some quick yards. This was actually late in the game this year, um, a couple years ago for us. We ran inside of a lot. We ran this play a lot. Um, this guy now is really focusing on our slot and running out. Um, so we see that from the box. Our slot says, hey, coach, every time I do this, this guy's feeling hard. Our guy in the box says, hey, we're running outside Veer. When this happens, he's doing this. Okay. So now we, we communicate that on the sideline, say, hey, we have two different play calls for kind of how we want to run this. One play is this one. Another play is this one. Uh, so we communicate that to our guys. You can see here we go out. This play side linebacker takes about two steps out. That's all you need to go get your four yards. Good look at that right there about how to, how to kind of get through um, for those guys there.
Okay, here again, four down looks. Um, this game we had two backers in the box. So initially we're going to start out like we always say, open gaps, B gap. We're going to insert this play side slot. So here's the insert. Big linebacker and a little guy, not the best thing you can do. This is one of our best games. We had the most success in this play. Um, our slot and our guy in the box is really, really good about saying, you can see 51 here is just eyeing up our slot. This kid right here comes back to us and says, Coach, his eyes are on my eyes. Whatever I'm doing, he's doing. So you can see here, perfect example. His eyes are on my eyes. He comes in. Our center does a terrible job getting the backside linebacker. He climbs too high. We get smoked. Um, pretty good there. So as this game progresses now, go to the tight angle here. Same, same, maybe same drive possibly as well. You can see it snowing a little bit harder here as this game went. He goes out. You can see number two steps out. Center does a better job now. He probably should have still taken the backside linebacker. But before we can even get touched, especially short yardage, if that guy's going to eye up your slot, take advantage of it. Um, don't insert that guy for no reason, especially with the size. That slot probably weighs 145 pounds. Um, compared to a 220-pound linebacker. Same play here, same game. Um, we noticed the guy was stepping out. Here's a little wishbone look for you. So right with outside flow with no insert, you can see number two steps out. Center does a good job now looking backside linebacker. Good play here. Good cut by our fullback. But you can see don't, don't insert a guy if it's not necessary. Okay, now we're getting some odd front looks. Um, two different ways to run our odd front. So I'm going I'm to talk about this here in a second, about how we, how we run our odd front blocking scheme for this play. Okay, so you can see here with this look, if we have any sort of odd front um, with two backers in the box, we're going to read now this defensive end. If we have a five technique, we're going to kick out. He's going to check for slant and climb. Unless you have a heavy shade, then he'll double. And – Versus a five technique, we should always go inside um, with our slot here. So kick out the five inside here, step to check for slant to climb. Good job here, going to get four to five yards. And while we have our guard step out, I'll show you here in this next example. Okay, so now we have a four-eye technique. Okay, so now technically this gap is closed, what we normally see. If we have a four-eye, these guys are going to what we call outside double here. He is now going to hug off of this to seal off the play side, and our fullback now is going to make this cut on the outside of this. You'll kind of see it develop here. Um, this guy most of the time is going to be either a quarterback or a pitch player. Um, never probably has to count for the die with the four eye technique. We also tell our slot if that guy gets in your way, you can see what happens here. Chip him, pick him up, block him if you need to. Um, but good look there at a double outside double team out of our guard and tackle on that four eye technique. Another good look at it here the four eye look. In this angle, you can see four eyes. We're going to outside double. Our slot's going to hug the outside double um, versus four down front. Versus, I'm sorry, three down front. You can see him here looking for play side backer. There's a good job seal blocking that. Again, we're looking for four yards in this play, guys. We're not trying to get anything crazy. Okay, here's a stack look. Um, we'll have some similar concepts with this now. Okay, so this team for us, they were heavy now on he. This guy was looking at him. Whatever he did, that guy did. So we just said we're just going to step out and go get it um, to the outside. You'll see here. So, again, five technique we should kick out. He's going to check for slant and climb, looking for Mike, looking for 34 here. So play side backer was stepping out with that. You can see 43 stepping out, eyeing up our slot. If this guy – if this guy's running out no matter what, not up your slot, or if he is filling, we want to insert, or we really want to probably be hitting the edge. Um, if our guy's going to do this, and he's going to go try to tackle the dive, go run some outside run game. Um, take advantage of them putting, having too many guys in the box. Here again, same thing. You can see this guy step out heavy.
22 here, step out. Good job here. You can watch, even watch our guard there. Boom, boom. His first steps are thinking, I'm checking, I'm hoping, I'm checking, watching slant. I don't see slant. Climb to the mic. Another good pickup there. Same thing here again. This is the same team here for a few clips. Four to five yards. That's all we're looking for. You're, I mean, that's what we want to get out of this play. Okay, here's another team showing us a four eye look. Um, kind of what we talked about a second ago. So a four eye, we're going to outside double it. Um, this team was playing fours. He was coming hard inside every time. Um, so you can see you kind of they, they know what's coming predetermined. So they're going to outside double it. The guy was nose diving us. 36 here is going to hug it off. Good job there. Block play side. You'd look at it off of that. Here again, stack team, you'll see here 47 run out. Good job here by our guard checking slant. No slant. There's my mic. Good run there, getting out of our fullback. Same game, same play. Now going again 34 here, he steps out. Climbing up. So take advantage, like I said, the, the two biggest guys that are gonna matter on this play is what your slot's seeing out of, out of the play side backer and what your guy in the box is seeing. Um, it stays pretty basic for everybody else in the play. Those two guys will help determine who makes this play good and who makes this play bad. Um, we had a couple questions on zone dive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer those for us quickly before we jump into QB follow. Um, the first one is any mate, anybody make an open gap call or does a fullback have to read it? Um, we've done it both ways. Um, we've turned in now to our fullback just reads it. Usually our O-line gives technique calls. So if it's a B-gap run through, that's our open gap. Or we're going to hear 2-I, two 2-I, two 5, 5. So our fullback just has to know which one's the open gap. If you want to make a call out of it, you could do that very easily. Um, would you rather check zone dive to a B-gap if you have one? That, that's where we've gotten the issues in the past. Um, we used to always check it to the to the open B-gap or to the – but. Once it started getting into that, teams would start doing some shifts and slants and kind of jumping all over the place on us. Um, and with this play, honestly, we probably want to always run behind our better offensive linemen. Um, so we always just turn it into a true open gap philosophy. Um, the A gap has actually been a good one for us. Um, so we, we almost want to pick now, just let your kids not have to think about a check. Um, we've talked to our players and we've seen as coaches. Our guys have been a lot better when they walk up to the line of scrimmage, if they know which way we're running the football. Um, the slot of that play side can really maybe cheat a little bit in his alignment to help himself out. Um, they can do some different things. If you know where you're going pre-snap, that's why we just turned it into an open gap play instead of a true check play. Um, so here we'll now look at QB follow. This is gonna be the exact same path as zone dive for us. So open gap, we're, that's what we're thinking about here is open gap. So QB, all he has to do is follow the fullback. So your fullback, all he has to think about is a previous play, and now he knows he's blocking. Um, the slot for us on this one is always going to sell the outside run play. So he's always going to go out, pull as many of you guys as he can with him, um, understand the difference here, again, between the even and odd fronts, and, and learn to be satisfied with four yards, a couple of things we already talked about. But with this play, make sure your quarterback's patient. Make, your, make sure your fullback knows who he's looking for. And we'll look at a couple of those things here in a second. Okay, so here are four down front. So we're talking about open gap philosophy, like we talked about before. Okay, out of our slot, out of him going out, we want him to pull. Now, if it was this defense, we want him to pull these three guys. One, two, three. With this look and this guy going in motion, we want to pull those three players with those guys going that direction. You can see one, two, three head that direction. QB now can go get, I think this is possibly a first down play here as well. Um, good play on first down um, to kind of put us in a, in a manageable second situation. Okay, so here's your B gap. Your fullback always wants to look play side linebacker to backside linebacker. We're running this play because it's good short yards. We're, we're expecting the play side backer to run out. So fullback should always think play side linebacker to backside just in case this guy slants into your center or your center can't get to that guy for some reason. So your fullback always wants to look play side to backside. So good fake here out of our QB. Quick flash fake, not in the belly. We don't actually put in his belly. Um, 
Be patient. There's a good kick out now by our fullback. There's your run through. Good job now by our center here. Get to the backside linebacker. Um, you can stay high. Same difference here. Look at the, the wide angle here again. Watch our QB, how he fakes. Quick flash fake. Nothing crazy. Get the ball tucked away right now. Okay, next play here. Um, same thing. So we're thinking open gap. Again, we want to hold play side linebacker, corner safety with our motion. You see all those guys heading that direction. Okay, here is not a good job, good job by our fullback. So now our fullback, like we talked about, always needs to think play side to back side. We always tell our center not to chase. He does chase in this example. So we end up technically double teaming this defender with our guard, I'm sorry, with our fullback and center. So fullback's thinking B-gap run through. He should be looking for him. If the center can't get to him, he needs now to turn back and look for the backside linebacker. As this rolls here, you'll see. Good job here, O-line blocking. You can see 64-25. Now both go to the play side backer. But now if we would have had 25 here, 64 back on this guy, that guy's not getting hit right there at, the, at about four three yards. So make sure your center doesn't chase in this play, knowing now he is always going to have fullback help play side. Okay, here again, like I said, another four down front. So we're, we're thinking of open gap concept. Good job here by our fullback. Checking play side um, to back side. Probably should maybe stay in the play side here a touch longer. Um, 44 here does run out, though. You can see. That's the biggest key with us doing this. That's what we want on this play because we're gaining the blocker with our fullback. So we want to really pull 44 and 21 with our motion. We do both of those things. Our fullback now, play side runs out. So he's looking for backside linebacker. There's backside linebacker. Fullback, good block. QB should have just extended that one maybe a little bit there and got the touchdown. But good run there. Puts us in one inch line for for a touchdown we'll, we'll should always hopefully be able to get that one inch line yard touchdown for us okay this is probably one of the the best looks that you'll have of this play um for every every clip that i'm going to show you um this team for us shifted and moved around a lot so you're going to see this play and then you'll see a play heading the other direction so this is actually a play a quarter so this was the i think the third quarter the play happens we huddle up on the sideline going into the fourth quarter. Um, big game for us, conference opponent. Um, you can see the difference between the two plays. So here, our quarterback always thinks follow the fullback, and your fullback has to be key for you. So you look at it here. Okay, so our open gap is C-gap. Very rare. We, have an, we do have a 2-I and a 4-I. We don't see that very often, but it happened. So our fullback now needs to take the same path thought that he would on zone dive. So he should be running through the C-gap because that's his open gap. Fullback now goes through B-gap, gets tackled by the guy that we're blocking down on, like where our tackle is supposed to be doing here. QB now does not have an opportunity to follow through um, and gets tackled by 27 here, who is the fullback's responsibility. Okay, like I said, this is third quarter going into the fourth quarter. So you can see what happens here. We say, you were wrong. Do this, please, and what it, what it turns into for us. So here again, C gaps the open gap. Fullback does the proper thing. A good thing here that our fullback does is that it's a good coaching point here. If you watch this play, this guy's kind of sitting in our quarterback's in our fullback's vision, but he needs to always think play side to inside. If he sees any sort of outside threat, he needs to leave that guy alone. So good look here. You can see everybody overruns it. Look at it again from this angle. Play side safety overruns it. Backside safety overruns it. Um, number one there was pretty fast for us, so good QB. Um, couldn't throw it very well, but, man, he could run. Um, another look at it here again. So there will be another clip from this game here in a second. So it's open gap, guys. I mean, it's a lot, lot more simple than you could even probably make it. So here again, same game. Really, really good job here by our, our fullback. Open gap. Boom, right there. That guy's trying to fill the hole. Good block. Really good cut here by our quarterback. Staying in bounds, killing the clock.
It's a good look at here. You can see gaps the open gap. Really good job here by our slot, pulling out the play side high safety. Terrible job here of him stopping his motion, um, 34, but good look at that right there. Okay, here's some odd front looks um, for what he is. So it should be the same blocking concept now as zone dive. Fullback should always look inside, um, but nothing changes here. Our, our zone dive and QB follow play should be very, very similar. So we end up getting a five technique. They shift down. They start out in what we would call bare front or double eagle. They shift out to a five technique now. So it should be kick, kick. He should check and climb. We should try to insert. I'm sorry. I say that wrong. This guy should go out. Our fullback now is our blocker. So we want with this guy going out that hopefully this happens. 51 steps out with our slot going in motion. Um, 92 here slants hard inside. Um, our fullback and quarterback just make a good play. Um, technically, they should be looking B-gap. Our tackle should try to get this guy kicked out. You can say we got lucky here. Um, our guys just made a good play, honestly. But good, really, really good job here. Our fullback's eyes now inside. There's his block. We do keep teach. If we're thinking B-gap here and you see like a closed door with a slant, we will try to have our guys keep in mind that they need to bounce it. Doesn't always happen. Don't always expect it to happen out of your guys. When it does, applaud them because they, they're they listening to the finer coaching points and learning well on the fly. Um, but still, we would hope with an extra blocker, we'd be able to get three to four yards, even if that wouldn't have happened. Here again, um, good job here on the kick out. Good run here again. This is first down, and we go get 12 yards. Um, you can see we line up in a ton of different formations. You name it, we, we probably line up in it, just so you guys know what any sort of flex bone look. So good lob here. We talk about these guys always want to thank this. Um, this guy steps out almost, so he gets the kick out, so now our guard can climb. Good job here, our fullback, looking inside. Good run here by our QB. Watch the safeties on this widening here. Watch both the safeties run with our motion. Take themselves almost out of the play. A couple more looks at this here. Okay, here's a five technique again. So five technique, so we should kick out. Kick out, just like we run zone dive, so he knows he needs to come in now. Um, versus five, that's how we teach our slots between four eyes and fives. I'm sorry, versus, I'm, I said that wrong again. On, on QB follow, he's always going out. Our fullback now, I'm sorry, should be thanking this for his block and responsibility. Good run there again, four to five yards. Here's your stack look. Um, probably one of the most difficult defenses that we see. Five technique. We see 75 here checking out. Fullback now can help with the mics. If you really have a guy that slants in hard, good play to to help account for the Mike linebacker. Almost busted this one for a big play. His backside safety made a good play here in our quarterback. But again, this is second and seven. We're running QB follow. So it's not just a short yardage play, guys. I understand you can use it at any point. Here's a good look at what not to do if you're a fullback. Um, again, here's open gaps, B gap. Our fullback cuts this guy. We do not want to do this because now you can see what happens to our QB. He has the fullback's legs to deal with, and this guy jumping over, getting cut from our fullback. We want that guy to stay high, let him make a cut off of it. Um, our quarterback just made a good play, um, cutting back off of that, but we'd rather our, our fullback stay high in that example. Um, we had another question here. Let me ask you this, answer this list real quick. Um, the question is, do quarterback and fullback need to be on the same page in terms of faking to the open gap, A, B, or C? Um, it's more just of a, of a quick – token fake there's nothing there's nothing much off of that it's our fullback just needs to find the gap qb should always have an inside beer footwork quick token fake and then just find the hole um, another question here is do you ever lead the fullback plus pitch back like a double lead we do not because it's clogged the hole for us before in the past um and if that play side linebacker play side safety is reading your slot um, both those guys could fill and create a big collision. Um, we want to try to pull as many guys as we can. 
Um, so that, that, that flow is super, super important that you guys are really, really good at showing the flow as much as you can um, off of that. Um, here's kind of some of my content information. We're, we're located in Northeast Iowa. We're a Division three program up here. And we've been running this offense now at every school I've been at, and we've had some good success. So more than happy to answer any other questions you guys have. I'm glad you guys could join us tonight. Um, and kind of take a, take a quick peek at zone diving can be follow And like I said, the, the big things with this is keep it super simple for your kids. Um, even front, find the open gap. Odd front teams, we, we pretty much determine if it's a five technique or what we call a four eye technique. And that's how our guys look at things. Um, so with that, just make sure your kids are on the same page and be satisfied with four yards. Um, your slot needs to have a good idea about that play side linebacker is doing. And so does your box guy. Um, if you're running any sort of edge play to where your slot isn't going out, is that guy taking that first step hard with them inside via your midline triple, outside via rocket toss, anything like that, if that guy's running hard or is he sitting there heavy in the gap, then you can, you can probably stick with those plays. But this is a nice little mix-up to keep them off balance there. So any other questions from you guys? You guys got anything else you, you're wondering about with um, zone dive or QB follow? Or I can pull up some other film. Um, since you guys are all on here, I know we got about 15 guys on here right now. A few more minutes if you'd like to see possibly another play that we run um, outside of zone dive and QB follow. If you want me to pop up a couple things real quick, um, ask now, and I may be able to show you a couple things or a couple thought philosophies that we have with formation or run play. Um, option wise, we pretty much run everything under the sun. Um, another question here we just got popped up. Do you ever run zone dive or follow to see what the defenses are doing to play the triple? Um, we probably more run zone dive than we would um, QB follow because zone dive will give us the true quick handoff, makes it look like we're running inside a beer, but we're just handing the ball off. Um, zone dive and QB follow are a great play if you want to line up in a crazy formation to see how they're going to line up to it. If you want to line up in tight and unbalanced, um, receiver unbalance, a trips thing, and kind of see what the how they're going to line up to it. These are good base plays to run. Um, another question about is, do you guys ever run zone diver follow to see what the defense is going to do to play the triple? Um, yeah, I mean, like I kind of I kind of just mentioned that a little bit. Um, another question here is versus even, do you check to the one tech? I think you spoke on that, but I might have missed it. We don't. We always just keep the op open gap philosophy with it. Um, like I said before, it's, it's better for our kids to be able to just know predetermined which way we're going. Um, allows kind of everybody to be on the same page. Um, that's why we, we've kind of gone to this concept. Um, zone option for us, there's a lot of different ways you can run zone option. I know that's like a big hot topic these days. We, we would look more to how we run our zone option is a couple of different ways. I'll, I'll show you a couple of different ways we've done in the past. We run it with more of a belly G concept out of it, play side guard pull. And we've done a true zone option look. I'll show you a couple examples um, here quickly.